Hi, we're group 2, and today we will be introducing the effects of isoproteranol, caffeine, and high concentrations of potassium on the frog heart. Before going into the results of our experiments, let's first review some general concepts required to understand our data. One of the recordings taken during our experiments was the ECG. The ECG is a recording of the electrical activity and volts of the heart over a period of time. In the human heart, there are three major events in the ECG. The P wave, the QRS complex, or sometimes RS complex, and the T wave. The P wave represents the depolarization of the SA node and spread of current into the atria to the AV node, or atrial depolarization. The Q wave represents the spread of the current from the AV node down to the bundle of His, and the R and S waves represents the spread of the current up the Purkinje fibers or ventricular depolarization. Ventricular repolarization is illustrated by the T wave. The second recording we used was the SCA, or systolic contraction amplitude. At the peak of the SCA, the heart is mostly relaxed. The lowest point of the SCA is a recording of ventricular contraction. If a dip is recorded in between, this is most likely atrial contraction. Here is an ECG and SCA recording. Shown in the green is ventricular contraction depolarization. On the ECG, the PR and QT segments were recorded to acquire information regarding depolarization in the heart. Because of a joined SVP and T wave, the PR segment was measured from the end of the SVPT complex to the beginning of the QRS complex. Because of a lack of Q wave, the QT segment was taken from the end of the QRS complex to the beginning of the SVPT complex. PR segment is the approximate time required for the electrical signal to spread from the atria down the bundle of His to the ventricle. The QT segment is the approximate time of the calcium plateau in the ventricular contractile fibers. The first drug we treated the frog heart with was isoproteranol. Isoproteranol, also known as isoprenaline, is commonly used to treat mild heart blocks and sometimes used to treat cardiac arrest. Like epinephrine, isoproteranol is a beta-1 agonist. When bound, these G-protein coupled receptors act on the GS pathway, resulting in the dissociation of the alpha subunit from the G-protein complex. The alpha subunit then activates adenylyl cyclase, which converts ATP into the second messenger, CAMP. CAMP activates protein kinase A, or PKA, which phosphorylates L-type calcium channels in the cellular membrane, RYR2 channels in the SR membrane, and phospholambam, a circopump inhibitor. The phosphorylation of L-type calcium channels and RYR2 channels result in increased activity, leading to greater amounts of calcium in the cell. In contrast, phosphorylation of, the, of phospholambam results in its deactivation, increasing sericopump calcium reuptake. This results in shorter contraction durations. These effects combined result in an increased inotropic or contractile effect. Isoproteranol also affects the action of nodal cells. Without external factors, a nodal cell reaches threshold by way of sodium and potassium flow through the I-funny channels. Once the membrane reaches threshold, the voltage-gated L-type calcium channels open, allowing calcium to flow into the cell and continue depolarizing the membrane. At around 20 millivolts, the membrane reaches maximum depolarization and potassium channels open, allowing potassium to flow outwards. The simultaneous influx of calcium and outflow of potassium causes the membrane potential to stabilize. This is the calcium plateau. Once the calcium channel closes, the membrane repolarizes, returning back to resting potential. With esoproteranol, the activation of PKA through the beta-1 receptor results in the phosphorylation of the L-type calcium channel. This allows the L-type calcium channel to open earlier, meaning the threshold of the membrane decreases, and the membrane depolarizes at a faster rate, or an increase in the slope of phase zero. Once the membrane reaches the calcium plateau, membrane activity continues normally. The shorter contraction durations are an increasing inotropic or contractile effect. This would result in an increase in SCA. The faster rate of depolarization results in an increased chronotropic and dromotropic effect, or an increase in heart rate and increase in nodal cell conduction. This is seen in the following results. An increase in heart rate, an increase in SCA, 
a decrease in PR interval, and a decrease in QT interval. The next drug we used was caffeine, which as most of you know is usually consumed in order to increase mental focus and decrease fatigue. In contractile cells, phosphodiesterase breaks down CAMP. Caffeine inhibits the activity of phosphodiesterase, resulting in the accumulation of CAMP in the cell. Increase in the amount of CAMP then leads to an increased activation of PKA, which phosphorylates L-type calcium channels, RYR2 channels, and phospholambam. These result in an increase in contraction strength. In nodal cells, caffeine also breaks down phosphodiesterase, resulting in an accumulation of CAMP. This increases activity of the L-type calcium channel, decreasing threshold and increasing the rate of depolarization. Again, like with isoproteranol, Caffeine resulted in a positive chronotropic and dromotropic effect, or an increase in heart rate and an increase in nodal cell conduction. However, because of the extreme increase in heart rate, there was also a decrease in filling time, resulting in less stretching of the ventricular wall and a decrease in contraction strength, or SCA. Caffeine also resulted in a decrease in the PR segment or an increase in bundle of his conduction and a decrease in the QT segment or Purkinje fiber conduction. The last treatment was potassium. In small doses, potassium maintains fluid balance and keeps the heart functioning normally. However, in high concentrations like those found in lethal injection used for capital punishment, potassium can result in arrhythmia and eventual stopping of the heart. Unlike esoterenol and caffeine, changes in potassium concentration only affect the ion channels and does not use any membrane receptors because of this, the mechanism of the changes are similar in both contractile and nodal cells. An increase in extracellular potassium results in less potassium outflow during repolarization. Less potassium outflow results in a higher membrane potential. With enough extracellular potassium, the membrane is completely unable to repolarize, and the sodium channels will remain inactivated. Without repolarization or hyperpolarization, and without sodium channel deactivation, new action potentials cannot be initiated. This is shown in our results. With the treatment of high concentrations of potassium, the heart eventually stopped, resulting in no waves in the ECG or SCA to take measurements from. In conclusion, isoproteranol resulted in an increase in heart rate and an increase in systolic contraction. Caffeine resulted in an increase in heart rate but a decrease in systolic contraction, and high extracellular potassium concentrations resulted in complete loss of electrical conduction and heart contraction.